Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for coming out here on, on a very nice day, but a nice warm day. <laughs> I'm most grateful to you. You know, I think maybe I ought to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing traveling around right now and trips like this so that you'll understand. I think it's kind of decision time in Washington, and the decision that has to be made is how we're going to get our fiscal house in order without overburdening the people of this country with taxes. Listen, I've, I've brought along your fine congressman, Bill Nelson, who's here with me and who is... Yes. Of course, I'm taking a chance on getting him out of there when there's so many people up there on the other side I know what side he's on, and he's on the right side with regard to taxes and what we're trying to do. Very briefly, because I know I have to move on, very briefly, we think the time has come to recognize that there are some things lacking in the budget process in Washington. Over 80 percent of the people, if we believe the polls, believe that we should have an amendment to the Constitution that says the federal government cannot borrow money and go in debt. And so far, we haven't been able to get action on that. But if you show some interest in it to the people in Washington, we can. The second thing is another one that I want to explain a little bit, because I've just been told that a lot of people don't know what I'm talking about when I say that the President ought to have a line-item veto. Well, a line-item veto simply means that when they're passing a piece of legislation that ordinarily the President would want to sign and be able to sign, but then somebody sticks a couple of spending measures in there that have nothing to do with the original bill, the President ought to have the right to sign that bill after he has vetoed those particular spending measures and gotten them out of the bill. Well, that's what I'm going to be talking about to the other people that I'll be meeting today. But right now, once again, I just want to thank you. This is very heartwarming for this kind of welcome. And I'm most grateful. Try to be deserving of it. All right. Thank you all. All right. Goodbye and again, thanks. God bless you.
he sold it at something less, you, you can choose the truth uh, Radio stations, so that uh, they cover their advertising, uh, place an advertisement on the radio and pay for it, and, and then argue with the station owner that they wouldn't pay that. Who does that kind of thing? Or the most, the most serious application is the, the emergency telephone application, where all of the emergency phone calls are called. But we're successful product and one we're a very way product. Why don't we go this way? Kenny Michaud, President Ray. This is a pleasure, Mr. President. Did you have a happy Father's Day? Yes, we did. <laughs> Mr. President, to the Germans of Expedited Holiday, do you, uh, you wish they had? Well, I can tell you, I know and have known that he's going to be tried for murder for every crime. Does that suit you? Yes. When was the last time you called your broker? <laughs>
President, you want the riots in South Korea to stop? have as their primary purpose the improvement in productivity of its user, a theme that we of manufacturing have believed in for a long time. We also reviewed our automated assembly department, our printed circuit board abilities will allow us to continue to sustain our record of no increase in product cost since 1982. Now on behalf of Mark Breslowski, the president of Dictaphone Corporation, myself, and all of our manufacturers to be inviting me down here to this tour. It's a pleasure to be in the district to come to the Bill Nelson and the state about my giving the rising star of the Republican Party and the Law for the Power. I saw then and got seen here today the real source of economic growth and productivity. It won't be found in government or in some bureaucracy. It's America's workers and work together as a team to create an impressive 70% increase in productivity in the last four years. the latest technology all you've worked so hard to accomplish all america has worked so hard to accomplish in the last six and a half years all of this is now in jeopardy
there are two dangers looming ahead. One is the trade bill passed for the House recently. It can only be described as anti-jobs, anti-growth, and anti-consumer. And the Senate will soon be taking up their own. They are the American people going to be made to foot the bill for the tax and spend crew on Capitol Hill. All right. All right. Now, I have to tell you, Last week, I addressed the American people and said we have to put a stop to this kind of thing. We've reached a break point, a decision point. That's why I'm going to the American people. I'm asking for your support to put pressure on Congress for bringing the reliability and credibility of our livelihoods. <laughs> Let's make sure that miracles like the one taking place right here will keep happening across America, creating jobs and hope and a better future for all of us. Now, what can you do that you could write letters? You'd be surprised how important they are. Nelson can, but it wouldn't have hurt if you wrote some letters to thank you to your congressman here because he is doing what's right and trying to help all of you. Wonderful this has been to see you all here and to see what you've been doing. I love all of you and thank you and God bless. kind words. We're determined to continue the record of accomplishments that you refer to. I'd like to say, however, that we've tried to provide an environment that allows those capabilities to surface and to prosper. An open, honest, help people grow, respect everyone environment. Is this some fancy imported philosophy? No way. It's the tradition that made in the USA values, the traditional made in the USA values, that have made us successful in years past, and I assure you it works today. Each of us has signed a plaque for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States.